Welcome to our Q morning and happy Valentine's Day. Nice to see you all. Hope you filled up your uh, mugs with beverage of your own choosing. My name is Dan Hansen. I'm head of core platform services in our business, and my department delivers a managed Kubernetes service called MKS. So a bit uh, about uh, today's uh, agenda. Of course, we're going to have an introduction. Um, we're going to identify the possibilities. We're going to talk about our Kubernetes platform and especially Armo. We're going to have some questions, some next steps. And uh, if, you know, if you are in, and when we know you are in need for more, some contact information. First off, uh, a bit about us. So over to you, Anna. Thank you, Don. So warm welcome to you all. Uh, really happy that you decided to invest your Wednesday morning and Valentine's morning to spend it with us uh, and this session. I do hope you will all be inspired, both by uh, the experts, but also inspired to work more with us in Orange Business. My name is Anna Renström. Uh, I've been working at Orange Business for about eight years and in the IT service provider business for about 15 years. And I'm going to give you a brief presentation of who we are in Orange Business and also a bit of a flyover over our services. So, who are we? Orange Business is the name and data engineering and data science is our game. You will find us in a local presence in almost all the European parts. And we provide almost all IT services you can think about. Cyber defense, AI, cloud, Internet of Things. And I would just briefly go through our service portfolio and I would like to start with our sovereign cloud self services. So this is what we call the consumable compute cloud. And this is also where we can deploy the services that Alan will talk about in just a bit. And this was built to meet the needs from our market, our customers, uh, to have a pure infrastructure as a service platform where you can have consumable resources and have your data locally stored and also with locally uh, trusted partners on your soil. And of course, of interest to have a predictable cost. Uh, and of course, uh, we can extend this service, this platform to the cloud of your choice. But of course, we would really like you to extend it to our cloud, which is our managed services. So this is where we have our sovereign cloud managed services, our extensive portfolio with strong partners and of course our excellent customer teams. They will know your needs even before you needed them. And if you want to know more about our services, our business, our company, uh, check out our website uh, and contact any of us here today at the webinar if you have any more questions. And enjoy this session. Thank you. And over to you, Don. Thank you, Anna. Then I will leave the floor to Alan. Thank you very much, Don. Uh, I hope you're all having a great morning still. Uh, I am Alan Hull and I am here today to tell you about uh, and show you also how to leverage the Armo platform for Kubernetes security. Uh, I thought that before I do that, I just wanted to recap a little bit what Kubernetes is and how we do it in Orange Business. Uh, so even if you've not heard of uh, Kubernetes or containers until today, I'm sure you'll be familiar with virtual machines. Uh, that's a technology that became very popular in the early 2000s and basically allowed you to um, subdivide and partition your hardware in order to get more performance and scalability out of it. Uh, so you would run an operating system on several instances on uh, the same hardware, uh, which let them exist in isolation from each other. So containers are basically that minus the OS. So they're even more lean and cost effective. Uh, and so what a container is, is basically an application that has been packaged together with all of its dependencies into a format, uh, an image as we call it, that can be deployed anywhere you want. Uh, legend has it actually that the uh, founder or one of the founders of Docker 
uh, came up with a concept when he was looking out of the window and he saw a uh, shipping container being loaded onto a ship from a train. And he thought to himself, you know, look at these things. They go all over the world from trucks to trains to ships. Why can't software be the same? Well, now it is. Uh, and Kubernetes, of course, is the thing that orchestrates all these containers for you. So uh, it's in charge of uh, spinning up new containers if old ones die. Uh, it lets you run upgrades seamlessly without downtime. Um, and uh, yeah, what we are uh, what we're using in uh, Orange Base in Orange Business is something we've called MKS, Managed Kubernetes Service. That's something we've built on top of something else called K3S, which is a fully compliant, certified Kubernetes distribution, uh, lightweight, high performant, uh, with a local flavor. Uh, we've also built that on top of an immutable OS. That means an operating system that cannot be uh, altered after it's been started, which has some pretty great security and scalability implications. Uh, and we do this in our sovereign cloud quickly and easily. We really only need to know how powerful and how redundant do you want your solution to be, and then we're off to the races. And the whole thing is tuned for GitOps. Now, what is GitOps? Um, GitOps is something that came out of DevOps, which itself is a methodology uh, or a school of thought that says that software development and software deployment should pretty much exist together in the same space rather than be handled separately by different teams. I'm just going to have a quick drink of water. Um, so um, GitOps is basically that uh, taken to the next level. I've written here a little cheekily that the, doc the documentation is the code. Uh, it used to be a joke by programmers that the code was the documentation. It was so well written that you didn't need to document it. Well, now we've come full circle. Uh, when we deploy something, we actually write the specification for what we want and uh, publish that to Git. And then that becomes what happens. The, the specification in Git is not just a documentation, it is the source of truth. So we define it, uh, review it, and then uh, publish it in Argo CD or Flux, which you also could use. We've got Argo CD as our CI CD pipeline, uh, takes the changes and deploys them in the cluster. So one way that that could look is uh, here. You have probably your code and your development pipeline, which then res uh, results in artifacts, so images in your uh, registry. And then we set up some shared platform. It doesn't have to be much more complicated than a uh, Git repo, where you can publish your Helm charts, uh, which then will pull images from your registry or a global one if you want, a public one. And then Argo CD running on our clusters will check that configuration in the Helm uh, chart and pull images from where they need are needed and deploy them on the cluster. It really is that easy. Now, is it too easy? Um, as we all know, when you're trying to do something complex uh, quickly, there's a chance of introducing uh, problems. Um, as we will see later, <laughs> I say this with foreknowledge. Uh, sometimes when you're trying to get something to work, you have to alter settings and permissions uh, until you actually can get it up and running like you want. And then when it finally does work, you may not quite remember what you did to get there. Uh, that's where Armo comes in. So Armo is a security and compliance uh, scanner, which is built on top of Kubescape. And Kubescape is simply the open source free version uh, that Armo uh, has created. Uh, it's uh, now a uh, sandboxed CNCF project since December 2022. Uh, and we run that on-prem in our sovereign cloud. As far as I'm aware, we're the only ones that do that worldwide. Uh, what Armo does uh, is to provide a scan of all cluster components and resources. So that means both your images, uh, which might have vulnerabilities, especially if you've written them yourself, uh, but also your config, your config maps and, and all sorts of um, settings. Oh, and best of all, it provides human sensible output, a remediation that you can uh, easily understand um, and, and then implement in your uh, Git repository. So uh, what you're seeing now 
um, assuming that that works, uh, is a Git repository where there are four services uh, defined. The bottom one is the one we'll be following today. <laughs> We've called it uh, important service, just to highlight how important it really is. So that's the manifest, uh, declaring a deployment, uh, an ingress, uh, a service and a config map. And it specifies that there should be three replicas running at all times. And here is the Argo CD view of it. So this is Argo showing you what we already know, what's running in the cluster, uh, the four services, the second of which from the left is the important uh, service. And clicking into that, we see uh, the same things as you could tell from the uh, YAML manifest, the config map, the ingress, the service, uh, and also you can see to the right there that it's running three replicas. So there's a, uh, everything has been done as we wanted. We're happy, we're up and running, things are great. But uh, <laughs> then we ask Armo, how does things actually look? This is the Armo interface. Uh, it's a web-based one, as you can tell. Uh, from the dashboard, you can uh, pretty much choose which clusters, we've only got the one defined at the moment, and you can also select which uh, compliance frameworks you want to use. Um, I believe there's even external ones that you can download if somehow you're not happy with the six or seven provided alternatives. Um, so what we're first going to look at is the attack path, which is just a way of zooming in on what is a potential vulnerability, you know, among possible uh, compliance errors or uh, misconfigurations you have, what could actually be exploited by an attacker. So as we uh, click into that to get a bit more info, we see that our web service indeed does have a risk of denial of service. Oh, and there's a code there that you see that you can click. Anytime you see a number like that, you can click it and it'll take you to the Armo uh, website where there's usually a good explanation of what the recommendation is all about and an example of you know, how things could, maybe should, look. Okay, this is the uh, vulnerability uh, section of the Armo uh, platform. So that's basically vulnerabilities in the uh, container image itself. Now for this demonstration, we're using an image that we built uh, so we're not uh, casting shade on anybody else's code. We actually purpose built this to, to have some vulnerabilities so we could show you. Uh, it also shows you if there is a fix available um, and if so, which version you'll need to get in order to enjoy the benefits. So that was vulnerabilities. Here we are looking at compliance. Now that's more to do with uh, misconfigurations, permissions, uh, stuff like that. You see that we've selected five compliance frameworks along the top. The leftmost one is the Armo Best. That's also the most stringent one. So we're only scoring 75% at the moment. Um, but we'll see what we can do by um, looking at the actual errors that are reported and uh, go about doing some improvements. So that's the web service, that's the namespace web, which is the one we'll be looking at today. I don't know if that went a little too fast. Okay, that's probably where I wanna be. Uh, so you can see right away that Armo is uh, highlighting the fact that the password for a database appears in plain text. I mean, it's masked here, but when we go back to the YAML that I showed you earlier, and maybe some of you noticed it already then, uh, it's written in plain text, which is obviously not best practice. As we hover over that, sorry, we see that uh, the recommendation is of course to use a Kubernetes secret instead. So define the credentials as a secret rather than have it as plain text. Other things is uh, resource limits, not defined. The image itself does not have a signature. Uh, the run as user and group has been set to zero, which is the super user. That's probably not needed. Privilege escalation has not been specifically disabled. And finally, 
the automatic. Ooh, that, <laughs> sorry, was a little too fast for me. Um, yeah, and some SC Linux uh, settings for compliance. Read-only file system also should explicitly be set to true. So this is Armo's report of all the things that it found uh, in our cluster, which deserves attention. Now back to the YAML file that we were looking at earlier. Maybe you caught it earlier, but you certainly now can see that we have defined um, run as user zero. We've got capability, capability system admin set. There's the password in plain text. It's all terrible. <laughs> um, so we've of course cheated a little bit. We've got a merge request ready to go. We, we kind of knew what Arma was gonna report. So uh, that's ready to merge. It's been approved by my colleague. And here you see the actual changes, which then mirror what we were told by Armo uh, to do. We're also bumping the container image version to one that has fewer, not none, but fewer vulnerabilities in it, uh, as well as the compliance uh, issues that were raised, the sysadmin capabilities and the uh, run as user ID. There. So that's being merged, and that's happening in uh, Git, as you see. And immediately, we jump over to Argo CD, and you can just see the tail end of that deployment being updated. Uh, to the right there should be, yep, that's uh, pods being restarted. And if you look really closely at your screen, you'll see that most of the things have been running only a few seconds. So that's uh, gone and done behind the scenes with a simple click. Uh, so now that we've done that, now that we've actually improved the thing that uh, Armo reported, we'll run another scan just to see if uh, things look a little better now. Which of course we have every reason to suspect that they should, but uh, now you get to see how we do a scan as well. So I click the scan, you choose then which frameworks you want to, uh, compliance frameworks you want to apply. All seems a safe bet, so I'm doing that. And off we go. Now, this usually takes a bit more than a minute or so, but since uh, we have the benefit of uh, magic here today, I can already jump us ahead, or so I think anyway. Whoa, look at that, 77%. <laughs> so that's an improvement of the, over the previous scan because we addressed all the issues that Armo uh, raised. Uh, these are the vulnerabilities still being reported. The image is still not signed. That's okay. We knew about that. And you'll discover that now there's a new uh, compliance error, which uh, was kind of being masked by a previous um, setting. I think. All right, we didn't get to see that one in detail, but... Um, and you now see that where we previously had four, uh, I'm sorry, five vulnerabilities in the actual um, container image itself. If we refresh that, it should come back with four. So, you know, better. <laughs> Still not perfect, uh, but that's also part of, of what CI CD is. It's a continuous improvement, continuous de deployment. So you don't have to fix everything at the first go, you just continuously iterate and make it better over time. All right, that's all I had. That was an in-depth look at the uh, Armo platform. I hope what you saw was uh, interesting, uh, tempting, hopefully, something you'd want to look into more. Uh, with that, I pass the word back to Don. Thank you, Arl. Uh, uh, yes, and now uh, over to some questions. We already gotten some questions in. Uh, Erlen uh, thought he was off the hook, but uh, <laughs> no, such luck. Uh, no such luck. I'm going to ask you some questions. All right then, be gentle. I will try. <laughs> How do we handle persistent storage today? Uh, okay, so there's two, way we, two ways we can do that, uh, or there's probably more, but we've chosen what we think are the two best ones. We use uh, block storage with uh, Longhorn. That means that you have a local disk on the compute nodes. And then we have uh, Trident, which is basically a NetApp or NFS uh, storage. We also use object storage for backing up that. So 
yeah, that's, uh, that's Thank my you. answer. Thank yeah. you. Uh, but what about uh, certificates? Oh, another great question. Uh, so that also can be done in two ways. We can uh, terminate the connection uh, outside the cluster so that you can connect uh, or, or do the validation with an external security uh, certificate authority. Or we can use Cert Manager, which generates the certificates on the fly for you as you need them. Hmm. Good. But how do you control access in Argo CD? or other managed applications. Right. Well, so the way we've done that is that we're using our existing user management and we've created groups where we can assign roles and permissions. So we basically just create the group and add the members that need the access and then provide uh, roles to suit. Great. Do you have any thoughts on the future for, for our managed Kubernetes service? Uh, well, since we're lean and agile, we're always trying to improve, so we're constantly evaluating new components, uh, new ways of, of doing things, um, even trying different hardware, different uh, architectures. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything, I don't have anything concrete that I feel confident telling you about now, but uh, I will say the future looks bright. Nice. Yes, and uh, another one. Um, it's regarding Armo. Does Armour read a configuration from the cluster or from the Git repo? Uh, so Armour reads from the uh, cluster. Uh, it scans the cluster in real time. Uh, you can host Armour in the cluster itself, or you can kind of give it remote access so it scans uh, your cluster for you. Argo looks at your Git repository. Armour looks at your actual cluster. Nice. Let me just check if we've gotten some other questions. Mm. No, it doesn't seem so. Then, um, to the next steps. If you are an existing customer and want to learn more about MKS and Armo, then contact your team at Orange Business. If you want uh, just some advisor service, about uh, our NKS, you can contact me. Uh, if you want to meet us, uh, we'll be at KubeCon in Paris, Norway FinTech Festival, if you work in bank or finance sector, and also in Vitalis in, in Gothenburg. Uh, and uh, for your new event, just check out our website. If you are in need for training or presentation live on site, you can also contact me. Uh, one moment, I um, got another question. Encryption of node host in the current setup, any encryption? No, we do not currently use uh, encryption of, uh, of nodes or hosts. Um, we use facility services to guard our systems, but uh, in between them they are not encrypted as far as I know, but as you mentioned, yes, encryption at rest for secrets, of course, but the nodes themselves, uh, no. Any other? Let me check again. No, doesn't seem so. I mean, any further questions, we're happy to answer uh, in due time, so just get in touch with us uh, after. That's, yeah. yeah, that's all our names and addresses, so. <laughs> yes, so uh, if you want to learn more, feel free to contact us at any time. And I will thank you all for uh, joining us uh, this morning. And happy Valentine's Day. Yes. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day.